Today's lesson we are working with mixed and entire radicals. So our learning intentions are going to be able to simplify radicals and our second one will be to write mixed radicals as entire radicals. So to sort of help you understand what we're going to be looking at first, when I say simplifying, you've done simplifying before, you've been able to simplify fractions. And so 6 over 20, the way it works is the human brain likes smaller whole numbers. So 6 over 20 we can reduce in fraction form. They both divide by 2 to get 3 over 10. More people can deal in their mind with 3 over 10 than 6 over 20. You've simplified it. You've made the numbers as small as possible. So an example we'll do today, we'll look at the square root of 40 and we'll work it down into some smaller numbers and it will be 2 times the square root of sorry, 10. Okay. So we're taking larger numbers and making them smaller when we simplify the fractions. And we're doing the same thing when we simplify radicals. Now the second one, to write mixed radicals as entire radicals, well this one here is mixed. It's got a whole number with a radical, and a radical just is fancy for, um, think of it as a root sign. Um, and here we have an entire radical because the whole number is under our root sign or it's under our radical. Before I explain how to simplify radicals, we need to know a little bit about how radicals work. So first of all, when multiplying radicals, you can multiply radicals of the same type. What that means is you can multiply square roots times square roots. You can multiply cube roots times cube roots, but you may not multiply square roots by cube roots. So an example here would be the square root of 6 times the square root of 5 equals the square root of 30. So any time you have roots that are same type, square roots and square roots, you can multiply the numbers inside to simplify them. Although this is not fully simplified, we now have to make the numbers smaller. I'm going to be giving you two methods to simplify radicals. Um, the first one works well if you're not really good with um, finding all of your times tables, or it works really well when you're dealing with large numbers and it's hard to find the times tables for them. So the steps are, first, if you want to simplify a radical, you need to prime factorize it, and then you need to collect groups based on the root type. So this is a square root, so I would look for pairs. A cube root, I would look for groups of three. Uh, a fourth root, I would look for groups of four. So square root of 80, step one, prime factorize. 80 is 2 times 40, 40 is 2 times 20, 20 is 2 times 10, 10 is 2 times 5. I'm just going to make this one a little bigger so you can see it on the video. So, step two, collect groups based on the root type. This is a square root, so I'm looking for pairs of a pair of twos and a pair of twos. So I have 2 times 2, and anything that's left over just goes back in the root. So 2 times 2 root 5, so 4 times the square root of 5 is the simplified version of square root of 80. And if you want to check to make sure they're the same, square root of 80 equals 8.944, and it's irrational, it keeps going. And if I did 4 times the square root of 5, it also equals 8.944 and continues. So they hold the same value, but this is the simplified version because it has smaller numbers and there's nothing else that we can take, or there's no roots that we can take out of that 5. Now our second, uh, let's look at a second example here. Let's look at the cube root of... Um, let's just try one. Let's try the cube root of 80. Okay, So we already have our prime factorization done, but I'll write it out again. 2 times 40, 2 times 20, 2 times 10, 2 times 5. Now, when we get to our second step, which was collect groups based on the root type. Cube root, I want groups of 3. I have 3 twos. So I have a 2, and then the leftover bits go back in the root. 2 times 5 is 10. So 2 times the cube root of 10 is the simplified form of cube root 80. 
Method two of simplifying radicals is going to be look for perfect factors. So what I'm looking for for a square root, I'm looking for perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. It's all my, uh, all the numbers that get square rooted perfectly. And 40, I know in my head that the biggest um, perfect square in that is 4. So square root of 40 is 4 times 10. Remember, you can multiply roots. So 4 times 10 is 40. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I have 2 root 10. Over here, 135, I know that, that one of the times tables for 135 is 27. 135 is 5 times 27. And 27 is a perfect cube. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So I get q root of 5 times 3, and we rewrite it as 3 q root of 5. So if you can find perfect squares or perfect cubes in your head, then you can do them quickly. So looking at one more, the square root of 80, the one we just did using prime factorization, I know 80 is 16 times 5. And the reason I chose 16 is because it can be perfectly square rooted. So this is 4 root 5. If you go back in the video, you'll see that when we did square root of 80 using prime factorization, we got 4 root 5. Before I go on to the next uh, example from Learning Intention, if you're following along your textbook or you, you had some trouble with what I just showed you, method 1 is done very well in the textbook using page 215, and method 2 is done in the textbook using page 216. Try reading through those and see if it helps. The last thing we're working today is writing as entire radicals. So sometimes we want to put everything back inside to the root sign. Well, to do that, we just have to make sure we use the same root type. So to get the 4 inside, this is a square root of 5. So we need to find out what 4 is equivalent to in a root form. So to put it into a root, if it's a square root, we simply have to square this. 4 times 4 would be 16. So what I have is 4 is the square root of 16, root 5 is the root of 5, and remember from the start you can multiply when the root types are the same. So this would be the square root of 80. If I had 2 root, and I'm using 4th root of 3, how can I get the 2 inside of here? Well, to get it inside, I have to make sure it's using the same root type. So to get a 2 inside, I have to do 2 to the power of 4. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So I have the fourth root of 16 is 2. And I want to put it in with the fourth root of 3. And when the root types are, types are the same, we can multiply. So we get the fourth root, 16 times 3, is 48. And now it's in its entire radical form. It's all in a radical. It's not mixing numbers with radicals. Okay, so your assignment again today, you can check the bottom of the link in YouTube uh, in the description and you can see the assigned practice questions.